the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. I'm going to show you today how to build an FPGA Caspo mining rig. Um, I'll show you the components, um, how it goes together. This is a very basic mining rig build here. Um, I'm, I'm starting off with this frame and the fans and the ATX power supply already attached. If you want to know how to do all that, um, I have another video. Uh, I'll put, put it in the description. It'll show you how to um, start, you know, putting the fans in, um, you know, connecting um, the PCIe cables to um, the you know cards that we've got, um, and also it'll show you the Molex connections to get the fans running. Um, it's it's a pretty good video. So if you need the basics, go to that video to start with. Um, this frame I already have built, obviously, and then. Instead of a motherboard, what we're going to be using is, um, it's called a PY, PYNQ Z2. Um, I'm going to call it a motherboard for the purposes of the video, just to make it easy, but it's very small. Um, it's right here and it doesn't take up much power. So anyway, um, let's get started. So the physical build is very similar to a GPU rig build. Um, these are not GPUs. They look exactly like a GPU. They look like a lot like a AMD uh, PowerColor 6600, but um, this is an FPGA. It's uh, TH53 FPGA. Um, I got it from a gentleman called uh, Richard Lowe. I'll put um, a link to the website and his email and everything in the description. At first I thought, um, it was a little bit sketch. Um, I haven't been able to find much research on this, um, but I can tell you that um, he's responsive. Um, he's in China, uh, so you might <laughs> not get a response till 2 a.m. our time in uh, the United States, but um, he's legit. Uh, he answers you know, your questions and tries to help you out with your build. So um, just contact him if you wanted to purchase these. Um, I purchased four of them. He said that if you tried to hook up more than four to a rig, you might get a bottleneck. I kind of noticed that on the fourth car, there was a tiny bit of a bottleneck. Uh, maybe they fixed that by now. I built this back in January. Um, but anyway, yeah, they look a lot like GPUs. Um, so the, uh, the blade here doesn't power this device like a typical GPU mining rig. Um, you're going to be connecting it via like a micro USB. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, these blades, I just use old cheap risers that I had laying around just as a placeholder, just to keep it from breaking, bending, and I'm able to use this regular rig with this, but this doesn't do anything except for allow you to set it on this little bar. You don't need to hook up any power to it. Nothing gets hooked up to this. Nothing gets hooked up to the riser. It's just a placeholder. So, um, as you can see, I've already kind of like attached these um, micro USBs in spots that I wanted to put the FPGAs. Um, all you have to do is connect the micro USB to this connector on the back of it, and that transfers the data, okay, from the FPGA miner. So I'm gonna connect these micro USBs, and I'm just going to Screw this to the rig, just like you would with the GPU. Same screws, same process. Okay, now it's secured. So, same same thing with the GPU. It has a um, has a uh, PCIe connector for the power. It's a single eight pin connection. Plug that in. So now you've got data going through that cable from the FPGA. You've got power to the FPGA from your ATX power supply. And then you're gonna wanna get one of these um, USB splitters. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the Amazon uh, link that I got them from. So you'll connect all these white wires that connect from the PGA into your splitter. And then your USB is going to plug into the motherboard. OK, 
Okay, so I'm plugging the USB splitter into the motherboard. Okay, now that we've plugged in the USB splitter, we're going to plug in the power connector. It's a power connector that he provided me. Um, just a very standard looking power connector. Um, just ask him for one, He'll, he provided one for me. So I'm just gonna plug that in. And then this will save you a lot of headaches. Um, there's a jumper pin. It's hard to see, it's very small, but it's right here. In this orientation that I'm showing you right now, you need to have the jumper pin on the left two pins in order to use the power adapter that was provided. Okay, the next step we need to do is we need to download the image file that Richard, Richard Lowe provides you. He'll send you an email with the image file and we need to flash it onto our micro SD. SD card reader is a little difficult to get the chip in there. Okay, so you should have already downloaded the image file from Richard Lowe. He'll send you an email with the image file. And then we're going to flash it to the SD card using Bellina Etcher. So download Bellina Etcher. And then you can flash the file to your SD card. So there's the file Richard sent us. Then we're gonna hit select target. And then we're gonna use, you know, flash it to the SD card here, the 32 gig. He said you can use 16. I just was able to find 32 gigs for pretty cheap. So I got a 32 gig. So we're gonna highlight that card right there. Select it. And then we're gonna hit flash. So it'll flash the image to the SD card. Okay. Flash completed. We're going to now eject our SD card. Safe to remove. Like I said, mine's a little squirrely, so I have to use this little screwdriver to get it out. There we go. Okay, we're going to take our SD card. We're going to insert it into our little motherboard here. Do with one hand. There we go. Okay, it is inserted. We're gonna power this thing up in a second, but I'm gonna get the Ethernet cable hooked up. Ethernet cable hooks up on the back just like any other computer. There we go. Okay, so we're ready to power on the rig. Um, I put the extra cards in while you guys weren't looking just because the process is the same for all four. I left this one off to the side so it wouldn't be in the way while I'm trying to, sh I'm trying to show you what to do on the motherboard. Um, I'm going to turn on the um, power supply. And then down here we will turn on the motherboard. You start seeing lights coming. I'd like to tell us it's on. Okay, now the next step, we're going to download a program called TerraTerm, but we want to connect our motherboard to our laptop. So this is the micro USB, and I have to use an adapter because I don't have a regular USB on this laptop. So this is an adapter you can use. Um, it's got a USB-C on the end. You don't have to do that if you've got a regular USB on your computer. Okay, so we are now connected from our laptop to the motherboard on the FPGA miner. Okay, that was a little too loud to shoot the video, so I shut the uh, power supply off, but we should still be able to program everything with just the motherboard hooked up. So we're gonna connect our USB-C, in my case USB-C, just connect your motherboard to your computer, whatever way you can. It's really hard to do this with one hand, sorry guys. 
There we go, connect. All right, so um, motherboard's connected to the computer. We're gonna turn the power on. Okay, connected. And then we're gonna open the program called TerraTerm. Download T-E-R-A, T-E-R-M, TerraTerm. And then don't do anything with TCP IP. You're gonna go to serial and then you're gonna select your port. Um, you might have several ports, just you're gonna have to figure out which one is um, connected to your computer. Mine's COM port four, hit okay. And then you're gonna see all kinds of gibberish showing up on the screen. Um, you need to change some settings here. Go to setup, go to serial port, and then change your speed to 115200, hit new setting. All right, there we go. Now we're getting the mining screen. So um, I've already got my rig set up on my SD card, but I'll show you how to change everything. Um, we have to stop the miner to edit some things. Okay, we're gonna stop the miner. We just hit, um, hold down control and hit C. Shut down complete. So now you need to type in some commands. Just give me one second, I'll type the command in. Okay, that's the command you need to type in. It's too small on the screen. So type in that command and then hit enter. And then the password, they'll give you the password, but it's just XILINX. We're going to enter our pool and our mining address, and you can name your device. Um, the image file that loads up from Richard Lowe will be, um, I think it's Wooly Pooly. I changed my stratum uh, to Hero Miners. So if you looked at my other video where I set up my GPU mining rig, um, if you remember, you'll pick which zone you're near. I'm USA East on Hero Miners. So you're gonna have to um, either leave Wooly Pooly, leave that you know pool alone that they set you up with. I wanted to mine on Hero Miners, so I changed mine. You don't have to. So it'll say Stratum, TCP, US2, Hero Miners, 1206. And then um, you're gonna enter your CASPA address And then after your Casper address, you hit, you know, period, and then name it. My name is Skynet. And then here is where you can change your overclocks. Your voltage control, I have mine set to 710, FPGA core clock, 800, and that's it. Um, so that's how you set your address and your rig name. After you enter your address and your rig name, um, you're going to hit uh, Control plus X. It should look like this. And then this will pop up. It'll say Save Modified Buffer. You're going to press Y to select Yes. And then basically you're just going to hit Enter. And that should start mining. Okay, so that's it for the build and the setup. Um, I hope this video helped you guys out. I uh, know CASPA is gonna have ASICs uh, all over the network pretty soon, so GPUs aren't gonna be able to really mine CASPA very efficiently anymore. There's just too much hash rate out there with the ASICs coming online. So I wanted you guys to have a fighting chance. If you did wanna have some exposure to CASPA, um, didn't wanna take the risk on the ASICs, I know Ice River is uh, supposed to be uh, releasing KS1, KS2, KS0. Um, I know Red Panda Mining has the KS2 right now it's mining, but who knows that they might not ever deliver to the general public. Um, I ordered a KS1 and a KS0 
Um, I don't recommend that you do. I'm crazy. Um, it was a huge risk, but I love this stuff and I, I you know, believe in Caspa and I wanted to you know, continue to mine Caspa. So um, I'm going to give it a shot. I'll let you guys know if um, I ever get the KS1 and the KS0. Uh, but in the meantime, um, pretty much pretty soon, the only way you're going to be able to mine Caspa very well is on FPGAs. And um, if these ASICs hit the network, that's pretty much it. So um, I wanted to give you this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If it did, um, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Uh, I know the production value is not great here. I'm new to this. I'm just trying to you know, get the information out there the best I can. So anyway, please forgive the production value and uh, you know, keep it decentralized because keeping it decentralized is for the greater good. The greater good.